necessarily done that I wanted to. I've got to have circled the non-negotiables for the, what's an absolute must for us to get better from our game the previous week and what's absolute must for us being able to, to move forward with. Uh, the second part then following straight on the back of that is, well, what roles am I sharing within that session? If you're fortunate enough to have assistance with you or you might have injured athletes, how do I engage them in the practice and what am I going to put them in charge of? Is it studying some things that matter to us uh, throughout the practice session? Is it a way that we can get them to, to lead something that they're really good at or they have some good ownership over? Is there a way that we can make things competitive and that they're finding just a key part of the game that you've identified needs to be better? Example, boxing out. Can a coach, can an injured athlete be identifying those things and handing out Miss box out two push-ups or praising when those things are in, in place. Um, the next part of any great session plan is going to be, well, how many athletes do you actually have to, to work with? Uh, we're in a fortunate position. We always try and make sure we've got 15 healthy in practice so we can go to three teams. But however many athletes you've got per that week is going to determine how well your drills work. So if I've got eight athletes, well, what are my drills? What do I need to manipulate? to make sure that the practice plan works to, to an effect and we are able to get them the most out of it uh, through that time. Or is there a part where it's odd numbers or well, advantage, disadvantage rules in my toolkit? Which ones can I go to tonight to make sure we still get to the teachings, the learnings that we want, but also that I'm not standing around going, oh, I had this thing planned for 10 athletes and now I've got seven. So making sure you know that going in. And then what I like to do is have our team set out. So whether it's, uh, something that I personally don't like to do is have uh, the same guys practicing together every single session. Uh, but as the week goes on, I want our starters and our bench unit to work together. So that might be something that I'm identifying. There's a certain unit that I need them to spend more time playing together, build their relationships. Well, I have that written down at the start of practice. So then I'm not trying to figure that out on the fly. There's a meaningful part to, to who we've got working with who. Anything you want to add to that, Dino? Yeah, I guess the, you know, like you guys, you know, we the ideal number for us is is to have 15 at practice, 16 at times in the holidays when we invite some kids in. But again, we we must get to 12 is is our kind of number um, that we must get to. So I'm sure you guys are similar that you must have a an eight or a whatever it might be to, to make sure that your team functions and your practice can operate the way that you want it to operate. The, uh, I guess the next part was, well, what, what do we use to plan our practices with? And Dino and I had a, a chat about that this morning, that we both looked at different softwares that are out there, but we actually both prefer to set up our own. Uh, and Kylie, I'm not sure if you were able to share the uh, practice plans with everyone. You can give me a thumbs up if you were. Um, but there's an example there of Dino's practice plan that, that he's always used and then uh, one that I've used as well uh, with our Oz teams and you'll see there's some differences in within them uh, but basically what uh, we're trying to cover is well what's the, the session about, uh, what are the key notes that I need to make sure I address with the team whether that's pre-practice, post-practice, just little reminders. I'm not sure what everyone's brains are like out there, but if I don't write something down, I'm sure as hell to forget it by the time the practice finishes or by the time we get into it. Uh, and then as best as we can, have everything itemised out uh, to the minute of, of a session plan. Um, Dino will talk to you about, you know, building a, a new practice and what that looks like for him. But for me, the big key is that there's a rhythm to how the session builds up. Uh, so when I talk about those non-negotiables uh, at the, the start, well, there's got to be some key things that I ha absolutely have to get done. If it's a teaching element, I actually like to do that pre-practice. Uh, so get a walk through, have the guys really look at that. And then so later on when we're getting into drills or getting into uh, concept building, there's already an ability or an understanding of, of what's been in place. So that will become the non-negotiable. There's always a defensive hit. There's always uh, something about us that we need to get better and what that looks like uh, now that we've got that example up. Yeah, sure. And I guess I've, I've always had this box on the right-hand side at the top um, with just little notes for myself and 
Um, you know, I've got leaders there to, to make sure I chat to the leaders um, about something that day. It was just a, you know, three people. And I always try and have at least three people that you've got to go and speak to. Um, Cause sometimes you can go a week and you actually haven't had an individual chat with someone on your team. So to me, putting on your practice plan is really important. Obviously, I'll just normally write written notes uh, on the practice plan once I print it out as well. This was kind of, you know, late February. It was hidden. It was in playoff time. So, you know, confidence, uh, clarity and, and being fresh for the game were the, were the three things that we really wanted. Um, and then for me, motivation to beat the Kings, it was something that I asked the player after practice or before practice or whenever just give us your motivation. What, what, what drives you to try and go ahead and, and win this um, semi-final series? Obviously, weights and coaches meeting, you know, we certainly want to meet for at least an hour as a coaching staff before we get on the floor to make sure we, we're, we've got clarity about what we want to do on the floor. Our vitamins is our individual workouts. Um, so that was uh, conducted and led by Ross McMaines and then and Justin and Reese Carter and other coaches that we had to get on the floor to really work with our younger guys um, in a good 45 minute workout before practice. Video, we tried to keep all our videos to around five minutes max. Um, scout video for a playoff series can go a little bit longer. Nick Popovich kicks off our session. Um, got, he's got 10 minutes there, so it's 10 or 15 minutes. You know, for him, uh, obviously, you know, he's working on, he, he works on a lot of defensive agility within his warm-up session. So most of the time, and, and we have a good chat before practices, what's your first drill, coach? And I'll say, hey, we want to go competitive straight away. And I'll give him 15 minutes and then he'll jump into something and get to a real high level so that I don't have to do any kind of warm-up as soon as I get him. Here, we've given 10 minutes and we want to get through some five on zero before we went into anything competitive. Breakdown drills, obviously, you know, great opportunity if you've got assistant coaches to really lead, you know, breakdown drills at either end. Uh, for us, we've got a, an 18-minute hit on our scout there and then shifting down just the teams that we wanted to work with that day. And again, as Justin said, you know, important that you, you find a mix early in the week and then come back with the, the group and the matchups, certainly in a scouting session like this one that you want to make sure that the people are matched up on the right guys. And then the ability to have a third team that, you know, Sam Short had some amazing days being Casper Ware. And um, I remember back in the day when I was on the Tigers squad to be Ricky Grace for the day or to, to be whoever was an amazing day at practice. And so we really saw some of those guys shine as a, as a scout team uh, as the year went along. Uh, some other things for me within our practice plan was obviously me and Nick Popovich, our high performance manager, you know, get together and, and we're looking at the load for the week. We're looking at the load for um, each day that we want to get. And so there's kind of four themes really for our week. The first day that we come back is a what you need day. And for us, that can be nothing if they've played 35 minutes and they just need to rest. Um, it can be treatment, it can be weights, um, it can be shooting, it can be an individual workout, or it can be three on three. Um, so that what you need day has been really good for us and it's a great day to make sure that everybody gets their individual video in review of the game and everybody starts the week the right way. Obviously there's a lot of conversations that need to happen before that what you need day to make sure that medical staff, high performance staff, coaches, have all communicated really well to make sure that we get the best individual performance for that day, but not so much a team focus. Scout day one, um, this is probably a scout day two right here, a little bit more, but again, that scout day was a good 25 to 30 minutes of, of focusing on our opposition. Scout day two, a little bit less, but certainly an offensive focus about how we want to attack. And then clarity day. So if we went into a game on a Saturday, Friday's our clarity day to make sure that there's really nothing new and we just tighten up everything that we want to do. One more shoot around before for the game to, to keep it pretty light to make sure that, again, execution is on point. So we've kind of worked with those 
really those four days, those four theme days. I think some of the questions that you ask, uh, you know, the strengths and weaknesses of the review the, of the game that you just played to making sure that you're, you're dot pointing those areas in your practice and make sure you're giving them enough time. Um, does the team that you're playing uh, challenge your normal rules? And I think that's one of the meeting, meetings that we always have with our coaches. Do, they, do we need to change at all for this team or just do we need to do our core defenses and offenses really well? And then if there is a, an adjustment to say, yep, they, they junk up some defenses or they've got a player on their team that's going to require more energy from us, um, you know, then we go ahead and make our adjustments to the, to the scouting section as well. And then is there anything new? Has the assistant coaches, has someone come up with an innovation to say, let's try something new. All right, can we plan out how we put that into the week? Are we going to use it in the game or do we see it as a plan C of something that we might use down the track in a couple of months? But you want to keep putting in um, those innovations and making sure that you keep developing as well. And listening to your assistant coaches. But the core things for me, have you got a D-trans drill in? Have we got a pick and roll offense and defensive segment? Have we got a dribble penetration and attack so that you, you're working on getting by people, you're working on defending dribble penetration, you're working on receiver spots offensively? Um, and then what was my last one there? Offensive system. Have you got your off offensive system in place? Beautiful, Dino. There's a couple of things I'd add to that as well is we definitely had some non-negotiables throughout uh, the season and the way we were able to maximise practice was just having those non-negotiables constantly reminded, like even when we're in five on zero, making sure we're getting to D-trans spots, getting to our pillars and, and our accountability on that. Uh, missed box outs in practice, we always had a penalty. And then Dino, do you want to talk about uh, how we reviewed ourselves individually at the post of each practice? Yeah, there was kind of three elements that we wanted to, to hit after practice. One was physicality. So we asked players to try and get three ticks. Uh, physicality, execution. Again, execution can be anything from, obviously, did you set the screen at the right angle? Uh, did you run an out-of-bounds play right? Did you get your defensive coverage right? Um, and then how did you make someone else better? Which was, um, you know, a great one for our group to continue to think about when at times we felt we were a little bit selfish as a group, but the reminder every day about how did you make someone else better on your team? Um, often people really saw that as screening and talking and the way that they passed the ball were the most common ones um, and how they led their team it was the, the areas that they felt they could get a tick for, uh, for making someone else better. Beautiful. Uh, Kyle, are you able to throw up the Miles one there? So I'll refer that back to a bit of a matrix um, as Kylie does that. So one thing you'll see on uh, my practice plan there is more about that emphasis on the, the right-hand side. Um, very similar, Dino, what, what's the focus of the day? Uh, understand these session plans are camp-based, so that's where we're trying to hit everything under the sun and just see how far we can go in a three-day camp uh, prepping this one was for Asia Cup. Um, but basically, teams up at the top there, uh, pre-training announcements, so anything that we needed to, to just hit or remind the athletes on focus. But that emphasis on the right-hand side, uh, the reason I bring that up is for, for us that have teams in seasons uh, in that development phase, and I think that's where this really is relevant. Uh, that said, I have used it with NBL1 as well, where I just, every time I've hit something in specific, I just give it a tick. How many times, uh, you know, have I done a breakdown of our offense? How many times have we hit D-trans? How many times have we worked on end out and side out? Uh, all the little things. That, so as we go on, it's just a checklist for myself. Uh, to go, yep, I've hit this enough times this month. Uh, if I go review the month and I, I see that we haven't spent any time on on our ball screen D, well, that's an error by me. I've got to make sure that we, we actually dedicate some time to it. 
And where I found it really helpful was when I'd review games and how we were performing, uh, be able to go, well, why aren't we real good in our D-trans right now? We'll go back. You know, we've only really hit it three out of six weeks, so we've got to spend more time on that. And just having a general checklist and be able to refer back to where, where your development tier uh, goes with it. I'll throw it out. Uh, is there any questions at this point in time for, for anyone of, uh, of what we've sort of shown so far? So I've got a good question here that's just popped up uh, from Amanda. Uh, Dean, I'll throw this one to you. Uh, what do you do when things don't go to plan? Do you just move on to the next drill? Or spend more time on the one that you've started with. What's your thoughts there? Yeah, um, I'm pretty pretty stubborn on the the defensive side of it. Um, if if we haven't got it right, um, I'm willing and more than willing to cancel something out at the end of practice and and stay with that one a, a little bit longer. Um, there's certainly um, a time period to say that's gone too long and you didn't achieve anything by, by doing it again. And often we'll get to a point and whether you've got parents or assistant coaches. So once it's gone to an area that you don't like and you finish the drill time, let them have a little break, go and assess it with a coach. Cause you might have a different viewpoint on it. Cause often I'm, I'm like, Hey, we need to keep doing that and do it again. And and then one of the coaches might say to me, hey, we've got tomorrow and the next day and we've got three days to make sure we get that right. They're understanding the general concept. They're just not doing it at a good intensity today or something like that. So um, there's been different moments for me. But defensively, I'd like to try it again one more time, one more rep, um, just to see if we can make a change. Offensively, I'm more likely to go ahead and, and let things go a little bit more and say, yep, we'll talk about that after practice. We'll review that after practice. We'll find a different way uh, rather than, you know, really push our practice plan out. Beautiful. Um, I'll jump over to, uh, there we go. We've got a few questions up now. Um, so the green uh, cane that I was referring to, uh, in that camp from memory, like we were just trying to make sure that we were hitting our culture habits every time. So that was a constant reminder uh, for coaches and then also what we just really needed to make sure um, that as a staff we were staying on top of uh, so including our team managers our physios everyone would have that sheet so that if anyone at any given time saw something that wasn't uh, the way we wanted it to be um, that they could use that as a reference point or a mining point. Um, do you know Joel's asked about the the daily vitamins and what did that refer to? Did you want to go a little bit deeper with that, like where we kind of started with yeah. that? Yeah, been doing that a little I'll, bit. I'll let you, yeah, certainly it was a, uh, and I'll and I'll push it back to you for some of the content of it. Um, but it, it certainly came from the Atlanta Hawks, and they they had a program that uh, once um, was it Mike Budenhauser once he went there that their vitamins and it was certainly something. Um, that the Spurs used to do as well. So um, that's where we got it from. Ross, who worked at the, uh, the New York Knicks, once he came, it was an area of individual development that he wanted every day. And so it was new to us in the way that we did it. And it was a bit more structured than the way that we'd done it in previous years. And Justin, I'll push it over to you about actually how it operated. Yeah, we're really fortunate that we'd have three coaches every morning and a couple others uh, be around so we're able to split our guys up into basically positional needs uh, so for example Jack Purchase was working with Toy Smith Milner every morning and what it would be is we'd, we'd have them every day we'd try and build up their week on something that we saw from the previous week that we felt they just needed a little work on but then daily touch that they felt they needed but we also as a staff felt they needed to be able to add value uh, to our group um, and as Deno said, it's a 45 minute uh, hit. Um, so, you know, we try and hear a little bit of ball handling, uh, a little bit of defensive concept, a little bit of shooting, like try and hit every element on a day and then try and get them playing as much one-on-one -on -one as possible. So they had those trial and error uh, elements to it. Uh, the next one there, question that's jumped up from Simon uh, do we film trainings and do we use it for player feedback 
um, like we would gang tape. Uh, I'll start it off like absolutely every, uh, ever since I've worked with Dino, uh, I don't think there's been a session we haven't filmed. Um, so we're, we're definitely uh, very big on, on gaining that and then using that for athlete feedback. That can be in an individual sense. We'll review practice a little bit as well. Then I'll let you talk about uh, the why and, and the how of reviewing practice there. Yeah, um, you know, it was really a job that uh, Reese Carter was uh, in charge of this year. And I think he moved from a, a stationary camera to uh, his phone, where he felt like he got even better quality um, of film on his phone as well. So um, I didn't care how it happened. I just wanted to make sure that I had uh, film of practice afterwards. And it was a part of my review about how I looked at how I coached, uh, how athletes um, learnt, how they picked things up. And then obviously if we, we did video most days of the week on a, on a quick hit, so we could pull a couple of um, edits from, from practice to say, you know, this is an area of improvement or this is an area that we're doing absolutely great in right now. And so uh, having that kind of feedback and having the access for players to come and say, hey, I want to see a couple of edits or when we reviewed it at night, we may say, hey, we got pass of the day and we'd put pass of the day up on our WhatsApp group or we got a sister um, charge of the day if someone took a charge. So, you know, just filming practice and then getting some feedback later on about uh, things that were good for your culture and, and, and winning moments in practice, uh, being able to show them again. And uh, the individual feedback element with it was really... Um, if someone had to work on so Sean Long, for example, we, we did some different things with his levels of ball screen D. Um, so that was a constant, just showing him his clips and showing him when he was good, showing him when he areas that he needed to be better. And uh, it was just, it's an advantage we have to be able to just fast track learning. I think most athletes we all work with now are more visual than anything else. And it's the quickest way to adapt it. Um, I think the other, the other area that we went to it that was good was uh, our practice players or a Jack Purchase who's not playing too much game time, that Reese would really take extra time in cutting up edits of those players that aren't playing too much to make sure that they are getting feedback and they are getting better at, they feel like they're getting better and they're seeing edits of themselves getting better in practice. Beautiful. Uh, Dan, there's a question here on how we transition from drill to drill, um, small groups getting together and feedback. Do you want to hit that one? Yeah. Um, again, there's a, there's a good mix, I think, at our practice about uh, how we review within a, a team setting, say a shell drill, uh, to say, yep, that group get together, um, talk about two things that you can do better one, you know, two things that you're doing great right now and then moving into the next part of the shell drill or if we think something is not right over the whole group is to bring the masses together and make a point to everybody to say either this is an emphasis before we do the drill or going through it, we're not seeing this for everyone, make sure, um, you know, this, this part improves. Um, as we move from drill to drill, anytime we finish something, it's a quick get together review on the team that you're on. Go grab a drink. Coaches will go together and review it. And then again, if there's any messages that we think need to be sent to the whole group, we'll make sure that we send that before we move on to the next one. Uh, we're kind of down to the last couple of minutes here, guys, but a couple last questions here. Uh, what are our views on punishments within training? Uh, one that I'll, I'll give an example of is is that on missed box outs. We were, we've been pretty consistent over the last couple of years that a missed box out is automatically just two push-ups and just more of a pain in the ass punishment to get down and go do it and have that mental mental check. Um, I guess the rest of the time, uh, any team that lost, Dino's been pretty consistent at making a group run. Uh, it's fair to say, isn't it, Dino? Yeah, and again, it's been highlighted. You know, we ended up being the best defensive rebounding team in the league this year at, at 72%. Um, so, again, 
you, whatever you put your time into and what do you emphasize the most, you know, you hope that you're going to get good at it. And we were in that element. Um, you know, we felt we started to come up with a number of true, sprint, true sprints within a game that we felt if we got to 40 sprints in a game that we were going to be successful. So again, we started to, we've always done it, but on a loss of a game, just making that sprint absolutely real and selling it that way that this is, this is something that we need to do. So don't see it as a punishment. This is actually, you know, us just getting better in our sprints. Beautiful. Uh, guys, we'll, we'll call it there. That's unfortunately our time. We're, uh, we're figuring, trying to figure out how to extend it and it's not working. So um, we apologize for that. But a thank you for tuning in to, to the, tonight's session. We're doing these twice a week, so Kylie will keep pumping them out. Please make sure that uh, you sign up as quick as you can. And um, we keep looking forward to sharing our info and input with you. Take care, guys. Stay safe. We will see you.